for this upcoming holiday season in December 2019, if you'd like to win a Davis Vantage View Weather Station bundle, go to the link in the description when you're done watching this video, enter your name and your email address, and one person will win one of these awesome complete bundles, the Vantage View Weather Station from Davis. Ham Radio Concepts. Hello everyone, KJ4YZI, Ham Radio Concepts. So what do we always talk about in Ham Radio? That's right, weather, right? Everybody's talking about weather. What's the weather at your QTH? If you're not a Ham Radio operator but you found this channel, maybe you're interested in weather. And I have several videos out on the internet on my channel about my Davis Vantage Pro 2 weather station outside. And here's my indoor uh, console unit. And there's a couple things that were always a quirk for me and always uh, made it a little bit difficult to get this information from my weather station out into the internet where I could check it remotely anywhere. And this might be the answer. This is 2019 update here to the Davis line called the WeatherLink Live. Now I'm going to show you the WeatherLink Live. First, let me give you a recap real quick about my weather station. It's been Marvel. It's coming on two years now. And then I'm going to show you what this is actually going to do. I mean, this is going to enable me to use my Alexa um, which I'll show you here in a second, I can ask Alexa, what is the weather conditions? You know, uh, what's the current weather? I could stream my live data easily without having to tie up my computer, which was one big thing that was cumbersome when I was trying to do stuff on my computer. And, you know, every five minutes, this thing wanted to collect data. My computer would stop, you know, it would start uploading it to the web. And that was cumbersome. If my computer shut off, then I wouldn't have weather. So what I did was then... I got one of these thin clients, a little computer, and I figured that'll be a standalone computer that'll run all the time, connected to my router up here, which will handle that even if I turn my computer off, and that was still a chore. So what Davis has done is they have come out with the WeatherLink Live, and this WeatherLink Live will enable you Wi-Fi at a thousand feet transmission distance to send your data wirelessly to the app that they have now, the WeatherLink.com or the WeatherLink app, also for, uh, up to 80 connected sensors to one WeatherLink Live, 10 different types of sensors, and even Alexa, what is my current weather conditions? And she'll tell you, your Echo Dot, your X, you know, Alexa, whatever. Um, so we're gonna talk about this. This is, they say, pretty easy to set up, so I wanna see. But let me show you my weather station real quick, and then I'll show you what I have here, because some people have asked about this console, and I'll show you how it's been connected now and what this is going to really do for me and, and how it's going to make it better. And then I could post a link on my website uh, or my Facebook or wherever, and you could check out and get jealous that it's 70 degrees here in Vero Beach, okay? And you're up in north freezing your butt off. Now here's my Davis Vantage Pro 2 weather station, and this has been trucking, like I said, about two years. Everything is still working fine. Very little maintenance. You can see I haven't even untied the bread ties holding that. I have taken it down and cleaned it up with some bleach, and I wouldn't recommend using bleach, as you can saw, see the uh, paint came off. But I did clean it up because it does get moldy. And this is a complete weather station that will do wind speed, wind direction, as you see up there. Rain gauge, which collects in the the bucket here it goes to the tipper uh, temperature down here this is your uh, uh, temperature sensor in here and they also have other options that you could put on it but this is your transmitting unit it's got a battery in there it lasts several years solar panel to keep it charged the antenna it's wireless this thing does not need power out here if you're a farmer if you're a gardener you could put this thing anywhere and it will work so I have mine about mm, 250 feet from my house uh, now about 200 and it seems to be transmitting just fine to my console so there's a lot of options. I originally got this from WeatherShack.com. There's a lot of options that Davis has and a lot of vendors. So you can go around and choose what you want, but Davis does make a quality product. And I've heard when I first got this and first put it up, there were several people that said, good luck, that wind speed sensor is going to quit in six months. And it's still going. I mean, there's not a lot of wind here right now, but it is still going. So I debunked that. Then they said, well, you know, this is going to break. And then, you know, the, no, well, hasn't happened yet. And I'm not endorsed by Davis, but um, Davis did post my videos on their forums and stuff. And they were like, hey, we saw it. Cool. You have a, it's, you're having good luck. Yes, I'm having very good luck. There's a lot of quality built in this machine. So I'm going to continue to use Davis only. Now, they, uh, they have a lot of different options, but the $80 weather stations you get are really what you pay for it. It's like anything. So 
Uh, so far, the Davis coming on two years. I have a couple update videos I showed you when I took it apart, cleaned it, uh, when I first got it in the initial review. Um, you could check those out, but that's where it's sitting right now. And uh, let's go back inside. So with that being said, the only thing that always got me was, you can see the inside temperature. It is not 81 in my room. The problem is uh, the case design on this, and maybe they've modified it since then, I don't know. But when you leave that backlight on for a couple hours, it, it raises the internal temperature because the internal temperature is measured in here and the outside temperature is measured outside. So that is one thing that maybe the case can be modified for or maybe just don't turn the, the light on all the time. And also this is plugged into DC power. It does have, I think, three C batteries or four C batteries for backup, but it eats batteries real quick if you lose power. A couple, I mean, maybe a day. So um, other than that, no problems really. Now this Weatherlink Live also takes batteries and DC power. And this right here um, is going to be an easy setup is what it says, the easy as one, two, three. And you know, another question I've had from my hands that watch, they said, how do you get this data to APRS for the automatic packet reporting system? Well, you can get a serial logger. Here's the ethernet IP logger in the back. Now this was an additional accessory to get my data to the internet. But as I said, it plugs into the router, then you had to have the software running. This uh, Weatherlink Live is going to eliminate me having the software running on my computer. But if you didn't want it, if you wanted to put it on APRS for ham radio for it to be broadcasted over RF, you need the serial logger and you need to interface that to a TNC and a radio in order to get that information to APRS without any internet involved at all. Although you're only going to see that really with radios and stuff like that. So. Uh, in the meantime, let's try to hook this up, and then we'll ask Alexa when we're done, because it says Alexa is compatible. We'll ask Alexa what my weather is. So in the box, not too much, because it is pretty simple. You get an Ethernet cable, which is a standard Cat5e Ethernet cable. Uh, your instruction manual that we'll check out. The, uh, this is your DC power cord. It's got the, the USB, and it's also got the wall board adapter and the weather link. Now, the weather link... Um, Batteries can go inside, so uh, I'll do that in a second uh, when I set it up finally. But in the meantime, uh, the instructions are pretty easy, really easy to understand. Uh, basically, your requirements are a Wi-Fi or Ethernet router internet connection. So if you have poor Wi-Fi, you can use Ethernet on this device right here. In case you live, you know, one of those houses where your AT&T sucks and, and you're upstairs and you get bad coverage. So you can put it downstairs by the router connected to Ethernet. Uh, your Wi-Fi password, of course, a smartphone, and four AA batteries, because you're going to load the smartphone app so that you can check your weather right on here. Uh, then we'll go into it further. Okay, I downloaded the app on iPhone. It's also on Android. I took about two minutes to create an account, as it said in the manual. Now it says uh, make sure that the weather link is on. Turn on Bluetooth on your phone. Click up here in the top right, and there's my uh, info. And what we're going to do is we're going to, and we're going to hit add. Now, it says, yeah, you're plugged in, yes, okay, next, Bluetooth connection, it's blinking, yes, here we go. Now, right there, I'm going to name this device, and uh, it's automatically going to activate this device for my account. Okay, it's paired on Bluetooth, now we're going to choose Wi-Fi or Ethernet, very simple. It's going to scan for Wi-Fi. I'm going to type in my uh, password to my Wi-Fi, there it is, garbage. Okay, the Weatherlink Live is installed. Now I'm going to add a station. Now I have one station. If you have multiple stations, you'll need to know the device ID of each station. So we're going to click on one because I'm pretty sure that they default to ID one. Vantage Pro 2. Click Next. And then we're going to select the actual device, uh, the number of the device. And at that last point, we have my weather data right here. And in the app, it'll tell you, you know, trends as you have it on. Forecast, do you want to go fishing? Is it going to rain later? What's the temperature going to be later on today? Well, it'll tell you what the temperature has been by the hour and in the seven-day forecast. Also, your outside and inside temperatures and, and um, a, a average. So the, the longer you have this on and the longer it's reporting, the more of a trend you'll get and more of a forecast that you'll have on the app. So the app has been redesigned since one of my previous videos. Um, the app was kind of missing uh, you know some info but this will tell me you know the wind gusts in the last 10 minutes uh, average 10 minute you know winds and uh, rainfall monthly cumulative so I can see what the rainfall is without having to go on the app like on the software on the computer like I used to have and pull a trend or a chart which took like a whole bunch of time and minutes to get that going and then you had to dig through it this thing will tell you right here 
what the uh, trend or the rainfall cumulative is. So you don't have to even go outside and dump the rain gauge. I mean, it's right here on your app. Now here is the WeatherLink website accessible from pretty much any computer. And I could log in and look at my Eric Ham Radio Concepts, uh, you know, station here. This is updated real time. Um, and, and there's different, you know, if you want to update in every minute, then you can upgrade the plan to a, a, a more advanced plan. But I'm on the basic plan, so I could update every, I think, 10 or 15 minutes to the uh, the weather site. And uh, But you could upgrade your plan if you want to. So this will show me, you know, everything, the, the moon phase, the sunrise, uh, you know, stuff like this. And it, it's very useful. I can get to this from, from anywhere and the app as well. Now, there's one thing I did notice here, and I wanted to show you this. Uh, you remember I just said here shortly ago that the internal temperature sensor on my inside console is a little bit prone to going up with the uh, case design and the LED uh, screen lit background. So with this WeatherLink Live, there's actually three sensors integrated. So the inside temperature and humidity and barometric pressure are now coming from the WeatherLink Live, not my actual console. So I think that's a little more accurate because my console right now says 83 and Alexa that I just asked said it was 75 inside. So that makes it more accurate, uh, you know, and it's a little warmer in my room with the equipment and computers. So you know, give you an idea here because now I'm just wanting to teach you other stuff about weather stations because everybody could learn something from this video. And that's kind of what I like doing is teaching people. So you can walk away after this video, starting at the weather link live and ending up like something about this man. Maybe I want a weather station. So this is an idea here of what you can do with it. You can have the, the your main sensor here, which I have, you can do with the rainfall. Uh, you could also have additional sensors like solar radiation and UV index, water temperature, soil moisture, leaf wetness, um, you know, and you can do multiple of those. And then that's all sent inside. And I'm going to show you this. The Alexa actually works. You just got to link the skill on the Alexa app so that she knows what you're asking for. But mix and match up to eight weather sensors. But they got a lot of stuff here. You know, some people have told me they like the Vantage View. Some people, they said they've had the Vantage View. I think I, you know, if, if I had the money for it or if I save a little bit, I think I want a couple of other options for mine. Like, I think I would like to see the, uh, you know, UV index and the actual fan aspirated uh, down here. So you can get an optional fan aspirated. Um, so when there's no wind, it'll keep it more accurate. You know, there, there's different things like this. And I think that would, I don't really need solar or uh, soil moisture, but there's a lot of um, other options that you can have. And I, I think I might explore that one day. But so far, I am just... Uh, overly impressed with the Davis line and the Vantage Pro 2 that I have. So if you're interested, there's a lot of different options out there. Um, it'll show you about the prices here, and it'll show you what options you link up with the prices. So you can check out the Davis website. The link is in the description. And um, also the link to the weather, ground, uh, weather underground map like I showed you. And uh, some more options that I put in the descriptions. But really, uh, you know, for every person, there's a need for a weather station, I think. Um, there's some people that are prone to sunburns because they're fair-skinned, or maybe they have some treatment or medication, and they're not supposed to be outside too long. You can look outside and say, well, the UV index is high, but really, you have no idea what you're talking about unless you have a instrument that will tell you if the UV index is high, if that's your uh, uh, situation. So, weather stations can really do more than just tell you what the wind and rain is. So on something like Weather Underground, you know, the wonder map as they call it, look at all the people that are participating in this. Now in the event of a natural disaster, hurricane, or just for them to do studies and understand weather a little bit more and to not rely on one single device out there that could fail. Look at all the people that are actually you know, broadcasting their weather information. I mean, this is, you know, these are all, look at this. I can zoom in more and more. Look, all these people are actually updating and maybe they're companies, maybe they're people, but they're actually updating, uh, uploading all their current conditions. Now this could help, um, you know, meteorologists when they really want to look and get a general consensus in this area. Okay. The wind in this entire area on the beach is a hundred miles an hour. Is this hurricane passes? Who knows? But uh, this, you're not alone. I, I am not the only one doing this. Okay. If you go to a different state, I mean, you want to go over here to Texas or something. I'm sure there's a lot of people in, in Texas that are, uh, participating in this, you know, and you can see, I guess, temperatures and everything right there. I mean, look at this. This is, uh, you know, a, a big advantage to 
life and property when it comes to tornadoes. You know, you can rely on uh, weather stations that are participating like this in the the network to get an idea. Like all of a sudden, wow, over here, you know, we have a, a hundred mile, you know, eighty miles an hour, or the the winds over here in California. I mean, there's a lot of and even rain to see droughts to see. You know, maybe you're thinking about moving somewhere and you want to you want to know. How many inches of rain every month you get in that in that state before you move there? I mean that that could be something you could look at for a weather station. So I, I'm kind of intrigued by weather. I always have been, but um, a lot of these people are too. It's not just me. I mean, there's somebody out there running all these little stations and uploading them into Weather Underground, and this is just one. Davis has their own weatherlink.com where you can check this as well. But I can assure you that the weather stations. And, and different meteorologists and storm chasers are all looking at this collective data. So I encourage you, if you're going to get a weather station and you really are interested, think of one that you can upload your info to a site like this, to a global database, and that way they could see what's happening in your backyard. Okay, how anticlimactic. Alexa died, okay? She's done this before. I've left it un unplugged for several hours. This time she's not coming back. There's no response. So, but... In order to at least give you an idea what would happen if you had your Alexa on, I'll use the app here, and this is what you would say. Alexa, ask WeatherLink my current conditions. Currently, at Eric HRC, it is 75 degrees Fahrenheit outside and 83 degrees Fahrenheit inside. The wind is from the north at zero miles per hour. The barometric pressure is 30.16 inches of mercury. And you get the, the idea. Shut up. Outside. Shut up. You get the idea. But if this, you know, if, if you have one of these echo dots or whatever it is, it would work like that. Uh, unfortunately, that's how I have to show you. But it does work with Alexa. Well, guys, thanks for watching. That's it. 7-3. Have a good day. Leave a comment and let me know if you have a Davis and what you think about it or... If you would like a weather station, what are you considering? I'd love to hear how or why you think a weather station is not a good idea to have in your home. Thanks for watching. KJ4YZI.